Hey everyone, my name is Oscar and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to go over how to make a simple script that can take audio in one language and translate it to audio of a different language. So this will be a real-time script that will listen to audio from you and it'll translate it into a different language very quickly. So this script is actually pretty simple. It only has three basic steps. The first step is to listen for audio input using your microphone and to attempt to convert that audio input into a string. And a string is just text. So basically just to take your audio input and change it to text. The second step after that is to send that string, to send the text to Google Translate for translation. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You're using Python to just pass along this text that you have to Google to translate it into the language of your choice. Once that's done, you should have new text that is in a different language. And once you have that, you do the third step, which is to play this translated text as audio. So once all of that is done, you'll have a Python script which takes audio input from your microphone changes it to text, sends that text to Google Translate, receives new text from Google Translate in a different language, then takes that text and plays it on your speaker. Though all of that will happen under the hood, and what you'll see is someone saying to your microphone something in English, and then hearing the translated version of it over the speakers. Now moving on to the actual Python script, I just made a short file here where I have three different functions where each function corresponds to one of the three steps that I had in uh, the previous slide. And at the bottom here, I have this while loop, which just calls these three functions on repeat so that you can kind of have this continuous experience where you can just consistently get translated audio for whatever you say to the microphone and uh, it'll just keep on going and going. So the first thing that we have to do is import these four libraries. Now, the first library is the speech recognition library, and that library is going to have to be used in order to make the record text function work. You see, that library is basically responsible for uh, allowing us to use our microphone and get text out of the audio that it hears. And so that library, speech recognition, is what it sounds like. It just recognizes your speech and turns it into text. The second library is the async.io library. And this library is going to be uh, needed for our translate text function. I won't go into too much detail about it now. Just know that, that it's going to be needed for that function. And it's just because there's some asynchronous functions that we're going to have to use later which just makes the function run a little bit more efficiently. In our case, we're not really going to use it for efficiency purposes, but again, once we get there, I'll go into more detail. This library is going to be used for the part of our process where we play the translated text. And it's really only used for one thing. That's for the Python program to use our speakers and uh, play text as audio. This last import that we need to make is um, for Google Translate. Um, this is a Python library that allows us to interact with Google Translate uh, in our script. And here we're going to use it in the translate text function, of course. Uh, but that's the fourth and final library that we need to import. Now, as you can see, these imports, at least some of them, have these uh, yellow lines here, uh, squiggly like yellow lines under them. And that's just because uh, we haven't imported these libraries to our uh, desktop yet. And so in order for me to use these libraries, I'm going to have to import them. Now, uh, I'm going to have to run three pip install commands. And they're going to look like this. Uh, these are the three commands I'm going to run locally right now. Uh, and once I run them, the squiggly lines should go away and I should have access to these libraries in my program. I think this command takes maybe a couple of minutes to run sometimes, but usually it's pretty fast. Once it's done installing, uh, we can move on. 
Okay, well now it's done installing, and as you can see, the yellow lines are now gone, and we can use these imports like normal. So for the first function, the record text function, uh, we this is going to be exactly the same as it was in my other videos, uh, in particular the speech to text video. If you want a bit more in-depth explanation for this function, maybe go and watch that video. But um, this function is going to look just like this. Uh, so I just pasted the code from that video into here, and it's a pretty simple function. Basically, we start off with this while loop where this record text function is going to just keep on trying to get audio input. And um, on the inside, we're going to have this try accept case here. And the reason for that is because sometimes when we try to listen for audio input with this library, uh, the library is unable to transform that audio into text. And that can just be because like the audio is not of something that could be understood. Maybe it's like a bang or a, like a car horn or something like that. Something that just can't be converted to text. When that happens, this throws an error. And that's when we would get into this accept. And then when that happens, uh, what we would want is we would want to try again. And that's why we have this while loop to just go back to the top of the loop and try again. Uh, we don't throw any exceptions. We just print whenever we encounter either of those problems. And then uh, so going back up to the try case where we can get audio input and transform it into text, uh, the first thing that we do is we use the speech recognition library to access our microphone and we designate that to be our source our source of information um, going on from there uh, we have this line to do some setup that is just necessary to get this library to work it has to do with the ambient noise as you can see we're using this variable r right now it has a yellow line under it which just means that uh, we haven't defined it yet and so Above this function, we're going to define it here, and we're just going to put um, we're going to put that right there, and, and we're initializing our recognizer, which also comes from the speech recognition library. Uh, but all this really does is uh, it's just something that allows us to interact with our microphone. As you can see here on line 21, we use the recognizer to start listening. Um, so basically, once we start using our microphone. We use the recognizer to do some setup, and then we listen for audio. Once we've done that, uh, we use our recognizer once again to transform that audio into text. And that's really all there is to it. Assuming that there's no issue with the audio, uh, once those functions run, we will have text from what we said out loud. Moving on, uh, we, have go, we go to step two, and we have the translate text function. Now this function, is going to be using that Google Translate library. And it's, it's actually a much shorter function. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste the inside here. Now, as you can see, this translator.translate function has an await in front of it. And the reason for that is because this function right here is an asynchronous function. And this is a function that we get from the Google Translate library that we imported earlier. And for some reason, uh, this function happens to be asynchronous, which means if we want to use it like normal, we have to put an await statement here. Um, we're not using the fact that it's asynchronous at all. Honestly, I just want to use the function to translate something. And so that's why we're putting this await statement here, uh, just to use it like a normal function. But because it happens to be an asynchronous function, we need to put this at the beginning. And in addition to that, I imported this async IO library here uh, so that uh, we could use this await statement. But notice how it has a red line under it. And that's because await statements can only be used inside of asynchronous functions. Uh, so we're going to have to put in front of line uh, 37 in front of the definition, we're going to have to put an await uh, async statement right there. And that allows us to use this await statement. Um, but again, we're not really using the fact that it's asynchronous. We're just, we're just adding this here because this function happens to be asynchronous. 
And as you can see, uh, these variables here haven't been defined yet, and that's just because uh, I have to add them to the definition. And so I'm going to add them here, and I'm going to explain a little bit about what's going on. Now the first thing we do is we initialize the translator. And this translator function right here just comes from the Google Translate library from our import. And once we have that translator class instantiated, uh, we use it to call the translate function. Now the way that this function works is it takes some text, and this is just going to be the text that we got from the microphone. It has a source language and a destination language. So here I just put the source language uh, to be English and the destination language to be Spanish. Uh, and so what this function should do in theory is it should take the text that we will say in English, we will tell the function that it's English text, and we want it to be translated into the language of Spanish. Once this function runs, uh, we should receive a, a translated version of what we said, which we can return as text uh, out to get out of this function. And that would bring us to our third function, which is speak text. Uh, and this function is also pretty simple. I've used it in other videos, uh, but the bulk of this function looks like this. And essentially, uh, this function is very simple. Basically, the first thing we're going to do is instantiate our engine. Uh, using that library I told you about. Remember, this library allows us to interact with our speakers. Once we have that engine, we need to set a property to tell it that we are specifically using our speakers to play Spanish audio. So to do that, uh, you need to set the voice property to be a Spanish voice. That's what this uh, ES-ES here is um, to indicate that it's a Spanish voice. If you don't put this, uh, it'll default to an English voice, and even though you have Spanish text, it'll read it just wrong because it won't use the right accents or anything like that. And once you set that property, uh, you can use this engine to say whatever text you give it. In this case, it's going to be uh, this input command right here, and you feed that to the engine and you run it. And in theory, once this function runs, it should take your Spanish text and say it out loud. And Going down to the while loop, again, we're just calling these three functions on repeat. There is one more thing I have to do. Now, because this translate text function is an asynchronous function, we have to call it in a special way. Uh, asynchronous functions are just a little bit different in the sense that when you call them like normal, they don't return what uh, you think they're going to return, and they don't even run. So what you need to do is you need to call it using the async IO library. And you do that by just writing this right here, async IO dot run, and you use that like a function. And doing it like this, it just runs this function, like exactly how you would expect it to. And it basically makes it so that the function uh, just works without having to worry about any of that asynchronous stuff. But once you have all of this done, uh, you, we are done with our program and you should be able to run it and it should translate the text for you. So I'm going to try that now. And so we did get this error, which tells me that there was something wrong with what we imported. It looks like we might be missing something. It says it can't find Pi Audio specifically. So I'm going to just try to install that and try to run it again. Looks like it works this time. Let's see if it translates this text. That did work. I just turned up my volume so that you might be able to hear it. It might not be the most understandable, but as you can see, it is translating it to uh, the language that we wanted. And there you have it. That is a simple way to get a translator uh, making a, using a Python program. If you wanted to, you can change this to be other languages. You would just have to change this set voice property and this desti destination language property. They have 
a lot of languages. All of the ones I was able to think of, they had it from Japanese to German to, um, yeah, as you can see, it works. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know if you'd like more content like this by letting me know in the comments. It would also mean a lot if you could like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.